the back of the back lot of a movie studio in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. I have been with women from around the world. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I... I'm your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Like Is 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. You in my class? I am today. So how long do I wait to call a day. Tomorrow. <clears throat> Tomorrow, then a day. Yeah. So two days. Yeah, I guess you could call it that. Definitely. Two days. Two days is like industry standard. Well, how long are you guys going to wait to call your babies? Six, Six days. Hi, this is Nikki. Leave a message. Hi, uh, Nikki. This is Mike. I met you at the, um, at the Dresden, uh, tonight. Uh, I just called to, to say that I had a great time. And you should call me tomorrow for in uh, two, two days. Hi, this is Nikki. Leave a message. Hi, uh, Nikki. This is Mike again. I, I just called because it sounded like your, your machine might have cut me off when I, when I, uh, before I finished leaving my number. Uh, my number is 21... Hi, this is Nikki. Leave a message. It, 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 it's only been six months. Mike? Nikki! Great! Don't ever call me again. Wow! I, I guess you're home. How many times did you call her this week? Twice. Twice? You called her twice? Dan, never call abroad more than once a week. Never, ever, ever. It's like it's 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Like Is 101. Let me make this real simple for you. This is not a course to tell you how to fix your marriage, how to spice up your relationship. We're not in that business. If you're a guy, I don't recommend that you be in a relationship. I don't recommend that you get married. I recommend you leave all of your options open. And I recommend you tell women you're leaving your options open. You would be amazed how many women are okay with that. Oh, they might gripe about it. They might try to convince you otherwise. But as you've heard me on this program, the ones who call up and yell and scream and threaten and jump up and down and tell me what I ought to do and shake their fists... Pretty soon their panties are around their ankles. You've heard it. You want them to be pissed. You want them to be angry. You want to treat women like crap. I don't advocate any physical violence ever. If you ever hit anybody, male or female, you belong in prison. But as far as being unreliable, undependable, promising to do things, not doing them, lying about what you do for a living, making yourself look better, richer, more successful than you are, I say go for it. 60% of American women are dyeing their hair. What's more dishonest than that? How about boob jobs? How about fake nails? How about lying about their age? How about saying they're on the pill when they're not? You should feel completely comfortable lying about who and what you are. As I have said on the program, you don't tell women you're in construction. You own the company. You're a land developer, for Christ's sake. Why do you have a hard hat? Because you go up there to see the buildings that, that your money is paying for. Why do you drive a crappy car? It's a loader car. Your car's in the shop. 
you dumbass. Why do you live in such a crappy apartment? You're just there temporarily until the renovation on your 7,500 square foot house is completed. Find a house that's being renovated in a in a hot zip code and take her up there late at night and say, see that? That's my house. By the time she figures that's not your house, you've already gotten what you wanted. Then you get the hell out of there. Move on to the next victim. It's that simple. We guys, we 101s, don't ever want to be in a relationship. We don't want to be married. We don't want to be paying for things. We don't want to be buying things. We don't want to be responsible for anybody but ourselves. We believe that you can settle down without any companion. I take myself as an example. This past week, I celebrated 11 years owning the same house. I have owned the same house for 11 years. I make a seven-figure income. I have a great job. I live in a great house where I've been for 11 years. I just put more roots down. I bought a second home up in Santa Barbara County, up in wine country. Every year I take uh, vacations to France and Italy and Spain and England and places like that. And then I come home to home sweet home, my two beautiful homes. What is more settled than that? I need some broad spending my money in order to be settled down. How can I be more settled down than I am? Nobody's more settled down than I am. Having a chick would make me settled down? The reason, I, by the way, tell me that I am not as settled down as a guy who is married and his wife cheats on him and they have to sell the house and he has to move to the now renting apartments over there in uh, Studio City. Living in a studio apartment, doesn't see his kids. Who's more settled down, him or me? People who are living, they're married and they're getting their houses foreclosed upon. Are they more settled than I am? <laughs> no, they're not. No, they're not. When people say I need to settle down, I tell them I am settled down. I just don't have a woman spending my life savings. It doesn't make me any less settled down. I'm proud to be settled down the way I am. Are you kidding me? Proud of it. After tonight's program, I will get in my car. I will point myself north. I will drive to my 20-acre ranch. When I get there, I will open the cover on the pool. I will take all of my clothes off, and naked, I will jump into my own pool. You will not have to see that. What's more settled down than that? These guys don't want to see that picture. They're trying to get that picture out of their mind. Can you do a cannonball? I, I might do a cannonball, Gary. Yes, I might. Yes. I'm getting right in. There we go. I'm getting right in. But seriously speaking, like us 101 students, we don't want girlfriends. We don't want relationships. We don't want marriage. We don't want children. Not now we don't. And even if we want to have children, we don't need to be married to have them. Because divorce involves alimony, which we call vagina money. Monthly payments for past use of a vagina. Vagina money. You want to have a kid? Have a kid. But uh, yeah, look, you're going to be pay, paying child support there. Do you want to also pay alimony on top of that? If you don't get married, you don't have to pay it. Guys, come on. What are you doing? And if you're going to have a kid, when you're 35 years old, when you got money put away, don't be doing this at 20, 18. All our good uh, the, the men who get joined the military, they all get married and have kids, and then their wives all screw around on them. What are you doing? 
You wait until you are at the pinnacle of success so that no woman you're with can ever say, I gave up everything so he could go to college and he could become a doctor. No, 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 no. You be a doctor first. So she can't complain and she can't tell the judge that she helped you become what you are. You know what? In all the years, there's only one woman in all of the time, all of the relationships, all of the marriages, there's only one woman who ever helped me with my career, supported me financially. By the way, we were not even dating by the time she helped me. Women are generally a hindrance when it comes to your career. They don't want you working late. They don't want you traveling out of town. They don't want you uh, getting involved in all the new responsibilities you have when you move your way up the ladder. They complain. How many of you guys are in a band? You try to work your way up, and you got your girl complaining that you're out until 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, you know, packing up your gear. Working, trying to chat people up, hoping you can get a record deal, whatever. How many of you are going out after work with the boss, hoping to get a promotion? Hoping to, uh, you know, go to dinner with clients and work your way up uh, the ladder? Only to get the uh, your phone blowing up and the text message, When are you coming home? When are you coming home? When are you coming home? Are you kidding me? Women don't want to be there as you make your way up the ladder. They want the, they want the benefits of it. So just bang your way to the top, and then when you're at the top, if you insist on having a chick, get the youngest, hottest chick you can get, because by now you are successful, you're rich, you can afford the youngest, hottest chicks around, instead of the tubble hard you went to high school with. I am your professor, this is my classroom, and uh, this is where we teach the tenets of Lycus 101. My job is to keep you out of relationships, out of commitment. I'm here to keep you out of marriage. I'm here to help you save money, time, and energy on women who are never going to give you what you want, which is sex. We know the purpose of dating is porking. If you have a date scheduled for this weekend and you're not absolutely sure that the purpose is to get laid, cancel it now. If you've got questions, comments, or complaints for your professor, well, the floor is open. Tom Likens. 1 800 5800 Tom. Tom Likens. 1 800 5800 866. I don't want 29 dimensions of compatibility. I want one dimensional underwear. I don't want to pull it off. It's Likens 101 on the Tom Likens Show. It's Likens 101. I am your professor. At 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. This is your one chance during the week to call up and get advice from your professor. So don't wait until tomorrow or early next week. This is it right now. We get calls about 101 topics every hour of every day. We don't put them on. This is the only time. If you've got a question, now is the time to call 1 800 5 800 Tom. Felipe on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, teacher. Yes, son. I need your advice uh, badly. Uh, there's these two female friends I have that I... Uh, Strike one. Two of them, Tom. Why do you have two female friends? Well, I have more than that, but there's like two in particular. Why do you have I, any? Go uh, out with. Well, let, well uh, let's take this one step at a time. Why do you have any female friends? Uh... Cause I wanna, I'm, I'm trying to get laid, Tom. But you know, but, but uh, if you make them friends, once you're on the friend list, you cannot move from the friend list to the getting laid list. These are two separate lists, and you can't go from one to the other. Okay. I'll stick. I'll, I'll, I'll stick with one then, Tom. With one. Okay. No, no. But the <laughs> point is, having female friends is the reason you're not getting laid. They are eating up all the time you could be using being with women who will give you sex. Right. Right, and right now I'm not getting laid by by either of them, but I'm trying. But but but, but you're, you're, you're before you even tell me what you're calling about. If okay. they're your friends, you're never gonna get laid. Now okay. you can tell me anything else you want to tell me, but they are never going to have sex with you ever, ever, ever. You know what, Tom? I mean, you make sense right now. I just I just thought about that right now. Having female friends, you're right. You're not gonna get laid. You know what I mean? That's right. But um, so what should I do, Tom? Um, these 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 uh, chicks are uh, 
uh, taking my money. Um, How are they like, getting uh, your money? It's because I, I like to treat them, right? To like to. Uh, <sighs> this to, is why you're not know, getting laid. Right, right. But I'm trying. This is that uh, I'm tired of spending my money on them, and uh, and I'm, I'm not I'm not going nowhere. Tom. So, what is your question? What, what should I do? Should I keep on? Uh, what do you think my answer to this is going to be? Well, I, I've been listening to you for like a couple of months, so. Uh, what do you with, think my answer would be? Uh, get rid of them. Well, right? if you knew that, why why have you waited this long? I don't know. This is. You know I mean, why? Because, talk? yep, you thought you knew more than the professor. That's right. And, I, and that's why I'm calling Tom. You know, I just, you know, you just said it plain and simple. Get rid of them and, and move on. It's just, uh, and you don't make friends with women. You can't right, be right. friends with a woman and then expect her to have sex with you. Point taken, Tom. Point taken. Um, so just get rid of them. Get rid of them. Move on and... They already on. think of you. By the way, they treat you like their gay friend. I'll bet they tell you everything about themselves, too. Uh, who they do well, date, who they have dated, right? Yeah, I mean, every yeah. now and then they come, they come to me with their issues or whatever. But... Right, with the guys they are having sex with, <laughs> who haven't spent 10 well, cents on them. Well, not that, but, you know, it's just... No? Uh, not that. So I, they haven't had sex with anyone? No, they never told me that before. Well, that's coming soon. <laughs> oh, I man. finally found a great guy. You know what? Felipe, I <laughs> finally found a great guy, and I wanted you to be the first no. to know because you're my good friend. I know. Uh, you know what? How about if I just, because I, I haven't, uh, like, told any of them that I want to, you know, get rid of them. get rid of them, yeah. If you, you want to get rid of them, tell them you want to sleep with them. Yeah, yeah th th that's what I'm going to do, Tom. Uh, I'm tell, gonna, them, tell them, tell them, tell them you've all, tell them you've already got yeah. friends. Uh, you've got plenty of friends. What you're really looking for is you're looking for a sexual relationship and you want to get laid. And well, uh, they they friend. will both tell you, well, I can never do that with you because you're my friend. <laughs> what am I no, gonna do? Won't. You're my friend. You're gonna ruin our beautiful friendship. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not looking for my first sexual encounter, Tom. And you know, I'm, I'm not a virgin. But, uh, it's just, uh, it's no, cute. I didn't say you were, but they're, oh. I'm talking about having sex with them. That's what you're looking oh. for. You want to have sex. Yeah. And you are wasting your time and money yeah. on, on, on women who are never, ever going to give it up. You know what? I'm, I'm a point blank. Just tell them. You know what? Um, By the way, let me guess. You've never told them. You've never tried to close the deal, have you? Uh, no. Um, so you I'm see you've right. got no game. Yeah, you know what? That's probably it, too. I mean, how did I'm you get sorry, laid? Did one of your mom's friends uh, call you into her bedroom or something, and you got in there, and it was like Mrs. Robinson? She had the <laughs> negligee on or something? I mean, that, how did you get laid in the first place? Um, well, I usually have a, I have a other friends, right, that they're hoochies. We call them hoochies, Tom. And you just take them to a bar, and they'll have a couple of drinks, and that's it. Well, well, but, why are you wasting your time with these other chicks, then? Because because they're uh, they're good looking, Tom. You know what I mean. I'm trying to get in the sack with them. So the the what you call the hoochies, they're not very attractive. Uh, they're okay, Tom. I mean, they're all right. I mean, anybody can get laid with a fat or fugly. Anybody can do that. And I mean, they're doable, you know. But doable, doable after a few drinks, right? Right. Yeah, a couple of drinks, you know. Yeah, but, you, uh, you need you need a couple of drinks. <laughs> hey, man, I do. I just, I just got to get home. Right. You know? Well, you know, if you want hot chicks, you have to treat chicks like like dirt. You have to treat them like crap. Okay. Because that's who chicks sleep with, guys who act like jerks. Okay. Like the roughneck kind of. Huh? Jerks. Know? No, right. and you do not, no, nothing physical. You just act like a jerk. Oh, okay, okay. You awesome, don't, man. you don't give them money. You don't spend money on them. You yeah. treat them like crap. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and haven't you, you know figured what? out during all these years that's who women sleep with? Oh. Ask a woman about any man she's ever gone out with. This one was a jerk, mm -hmm. and this one was a creep. And whatever happened to nice guys? And every yeah. guy I go out with is a jerk. Yeah. The message there is, be a jerk. Okay, man. I will be a jerk, Tom. I'm going to treat them like, like they should be treated. Like crap. Definitely. definitely, definitely. Treat them like crap. Definitely, Tom. 
You know, um, I learned uh, in this couple of minutes talking with you, man, I learned a couple of things, man, and, you know, and I appreciate your help, man. Right. You are the man. You are the man. I've been listening to you for a little bit, man, but I already know you're the man. Well, you're thank you. Man. Thank you, Felipe. Can you take me out Mexican cell time? I certainly can. Thank you. Yeah! It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Riley is listening to our online stream in Seattle on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Well, uh, long time, first time, and I uh, I got a chick's number at a bar, but I'm a, I, I'm a little troubled on where to go from there. Have you ever converted one of these into a score before? Uh, not, not really. I... Uh, I kind of started picking up my balls after uh, my last girlfriend. She was a ball busting bitch. And uh, so all you've had is girlfriends. You've never actually gone out and had just a sexual encounter with someone. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Why is that? Because uh, I was uh, fooled by society into thinking uh, girlfriend and marriage was the only way to go. Pacific Northwest single mother? <laughs> Definitely. There we go. Yep. Yep, well, just remember this. Did your mom tell you your dad was a jerk? Oh, yeah, she was like, oh, dad be drunk, oh, he's so mean. Yeah. Did, did you ever wonder why your mom opened her legs for a dead be drunk and said, let's have a baby? All the time. We'll call him Riley. Yeah, your oh. mom who gave you all that crap about your dad, that's who she was attracted to, a drunken deadbeat. Hmm. All right, so, uh. Do what the last caller was advised to do. But it's the same thing. Women love unreliable, undependable jerks. Even your own mother does. Well, uh, thanks for the advice. I mean, look who your mother had sex with. Uh, <laughs> a drunk, a deadbeat. That's how you got here. Oh, wow, that's just... It's a little confusing why they do that. But. No, it's actually, it shouldn't be confusing at all. It should finally answer the questions you've been having. You've been doing what your mother's been recommending, and it hasn't been working, and you feel like you've been fooled. But if you think about it, it's completely logical. Your mother may have been telling you what to do, and you've been trying to do what she told you, but your mother herself didn't do what she told you to do. The exact opposite. I get it. Your mother was not attracted to guys like the kind of guy she's trying to get you to be. She no, was attracted no, no, no. to drunken jerks. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, that's what you need to become an undependable, unreliable jerk. And if alcohol helps grease the skids, go for it. <laughs> become an a hole and, uh, the booty meat will start rolling in, I Do guess. the opposite. Instead of doing what, what your mother recommended, do what your dad did. If your dad did it, do that. All right. Think about it, by the way. Have you even seen your dad lately? Um, I, I saw him a few years ago, but uh, he looked like he was uh, doing pretty well for himself. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Maybe you know what you need to do? You're an adult now, Riley. Yeah. You need to schedule some time. And see if he'll let you come out and spend a weekend with him or a couple of days and go do it. Mm. All right. Take advice from uh, the master. Take yeah. notes. I'll bet he gets more chicks than he, can, uh, the, the, than he can ever bang. I wouldn't doubt it. Think about it. He's a complete jerk. He's probably uh, just setting him up and knocking him down. How old is your dad? Um, He's about 43. Your dad's younger than I am. He's probably getting them left and right. I I wouldn't doubt it. When I went over there before, he was uh, he was drowning in women. That's what I'm telling you. You see, now is it starting to make sense? It, it really does now. Your mother spread her legs for a drunken reprobate. And uh, I gotta I gotta become uh, that guy. And that's I'll, uh... right. And here's your mother going. Oh, you gotta respect women. You gotta sit down to pee, and you gotta respect their feelings. They want you to cry for them. And your father was a real a-hole, a real jerk, a real creep. But who did she have sex with? Who did she procreate with? Uh, the drunken jerk. Right. The, the loser. Don't be what your mother told you to be. Be the man your mother was attracted to, a complete jerk. Well, 
lie. Then go spend a couple of days with that jerk and find out what he knows. It sounds like a fine idea to me. Your whole life will turn around, Riley. I want you to call me with a full report. Where does your dad live? He lives uh, down by the Cowlitz River. All right. I want you to, uh, to, to, to call him up. You, if you want, you can tell him you spoke to me. I want you to tell him you want to spend some quality time with him. That's about time you two spend some quality time together. Okay. And uh, you don't want to mess up his action or anything, but if he can see uh, fit to, to clear a day or two on his calendar, you'd be honored to spend a couple of days with him. Mm. And then rather than, you know, doing what fathers and sons do, going fishing, going to the ball game, you tell him you want to go buy him a beer and then watch him in action. That sounds like a, a really good idea. I'm going to have to try that. You need to be more like him. Well, uh, thanks for the advice, Tom. Could you take me out old, old school style? Yes, Riley, I certainly can. Mm -hmm. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Yo, amigo. Come join the party of the year on Cinco de Mayo. Broadcast live from Camacho's in the city of industry. For details, go to blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likes Show. Like is 101 from Hollywood. I am your professor. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Fella, I like his one one. Hello, hello, father. Yes, son. I was just wondering, what is it about treating women like crap that will get you to sleep with them? You mean that will get them to sleep with you? Yeah. Sorry. Well, women love to say they want to be treated like ladies, but the reality is uh, that time and time again, if you ask women about their last boyfriend, their last husband, what do they tell you? Oh, he was a real jerk. He was a real <laughs> jerk. Yeah. So clearly, the uh, thing is, ask her if she slept with that real jerk. 99 times out of 100, she did. All right. So here you are trying to be nice to her, trying to be Sir Walter Raleigh, opening her car doors and, you know, uh, bringing flowers and being thoughtful. And she cannot resist telling you what a jerk the last guy was, the guy who got sex. Oh, she's comparing you with the other guy then. Who was a jerk who she used to have sex with. Thing is, I tried that. Like, I tried being a jerk, and it, it backfired on me. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I just don't have the game or something. But it just how did it backfire? It okay, well, like, I, I followed your rule. You know, take her somewhere cheap. So I went straight to Denny's. I'm like, oh man. Like no, but it, you bucks. can't go to someplace that's overtly cheap. Denny's. Okay. Denny's right. is like IHOP. Okay, it is asexual. All right. So great place for a two ninety nine breakfast if you're on your own. I think it's fantastic for that. Uh, if your grandmother wants to have breakfast with you on Mother's Day, Denny's, good place, all right? But uh, not the place to go on a date. The lighting is wrong. The atmosphere is wrong. It's wrong. All right, so someplace like... you got to go someplace oh, with a hypnotist factor. Now, I'm going to throw a bunch of names of places in L.A. out at you. All right. And if you've been to any of them, you'll see the pattern here, okay? All right. El Coyote. Oh, yeah. All right. The, there's a hypnosis factor in El Coyote. Yep. It's uh, one of the two oldest Mexican restaurants still operating in Los Angeles. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, darker, funkier, and you go to the bar and you get those uh, margaritas out of a gun. They're like less than five bucks out of a gun. They're pre-mixed. Boom. Oh, this this isn't some happy hour thing either? No, 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 no. They come right out of the hose. All right. And And the food is decent. All right. That's one example, okay? But you want the places you go can't have fluorescent lighting. <laughs> they cannot be brightly lit. You want to go to places that are dark and have some kind of a hypnosis factor. All right. So All like, right. Like I, I was saying, um, I, I tried doing that jerking, but it just didn't work. I like. I walked in front of her before we got in. I opened the door. I didn't leave it open for her. I just closed it right in front of her, you know. Um, when the, the server was show, showing us to our chairs, I didn't pull hers out. I just sat straight in That's mine. good. But I, that's not the reason you didn't get laid. All right. And then she's like, so uh, what, what are your plans for the future? I'm like making all this stuff up. You know, oh, I plan on uh, 
owning this really big business that I'm going to inherit from my uh, father, who wow. lives in uh, Beverly Hills, and et cetera. And then she's like, oh, well, how about family? I'm like, oh, hell no, you keep me away from that. I don't want to do anything that, that involves me signing a contract with another woman. That's a bad thing. Oh, no, you don't tell him that. Oh, okay. You don't tell him that. All right, so how, how, how do I do it then? Tell him. I'm 22 years old. I'm still figuring out who I am. Before I start a family, I want to make sure that I have a good education, that I've got uh, money put away, that I'm prepared uh, to buy a house. You want to give the uh, impression of being a responsible person, okay. a wealthy person, a successful person, that being successful and well-educated are priorities for you, even if they aren't. All right. That's what you want to do. That's what I did wrong then. Yeah, don't be telling her you don't want to have a family. Guess what? You're not going to have a family with her. You're going to bang her, and you're going to use a condom, and then you're going to get the hell out of there. All right. I got it. Tom, you saved my life. I was in a relationship for three years. I got out of it. A friend told me to listen to you. Saved me ever since. And I was wondering if you can take me out old school. I certainly can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here's Vincent on Lycus one hundred one. Hello. Hello, Dad. Son. No, first time. Thank you. I have. I need some advice. I got a girl that I've been with for a while now. Booty call, you could say. Well, yeah, been, she, yeah, you have been with her. You've been banging her. Yes, and now she wants to go a little further. Now it's time so, to go. She wants to take it. She wants to make it official. It's time to go. Time to go. Time to go. She, she, um, she's she's been married. She's uh, she she does she wants it. No questions asked. What does that mean? Um, she can see who she wants. I can see who she wants. Basically, if we're together, we're together. If we're Why not do together. you need a relationship? That's right it. now, the two of you can see whoever you want. That's true. She wants me to take care of her. No. As if she was my girlfriend. No. 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 That's all I that's all I need to know. No, the answer is no. All right. All right. Uh, with that you know, all the booty call arrangements generally have a limited shelf life and you have to enjoy them while you've got them. Okay. And then once they start making demands or requests, that's when it's time to go. That's all I need to know, Dad. You know, unless her name is uh, Jessica Alba or Salma Hayek. That's true. And even then. <laughs> all right, Dad, that's all I know. Can you take me out bunk style? Of course I can, Vincent. <coughs> it's Jose on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay, Jose. Okay, Tom. Here is my situation. It's similar to the other guys who got called. And, you know, um, I have known this woman for almost two years. She's my co-worker. She just got divorced. She has three kids. And, you know, suffers from depression once in a while. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, uh, Don't we hang tell around. Me this. I, for many times we go out like ten times already, and always refuse to be touched. I mean, she, her, her excuse is that she she was when she was married, she's so married, you know, let's not do this and that. Now her excuse is that I'm the one who's married. I'm not really married, but I'm just living together with somebody for almost ten years. You're living with someone? Yes. And you have a girlfriend? I do. What are you doing? I don't know, Tom. And I'm 40 years old. Can you believe And that? you're dating somebody who suffers from what sounds like clinical depression. Yeah. And has three children and won't have sex with you. That's bad, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, there's like uh, 47 different things wrong with what you're doing. Yeah, like everything is wrong. I guess I am. So I need your help, Tom. Get out. Of, stop living with somebody that uh, you want to fool around on. Stop having uh, relationships with women who have any kind of mental illness. Mental illness is out. Oh, God, I wish I can do that now, Tom, but, you know, I ha I think I have become attached to this woman because I really... Why? She never has sex with you. No, and that's the that thing, Tom. Maybe that's what I need from her, and then once I have that, probably uh, it, it will be over. Because I You're really... not going to get it. 
What? She's already told you you're not going to get it. You think so? She I told you. Right, but she, I think what she wants me is to get also, you know, divorced or just separate so I, she can probably give it up. Uh, <laughs> the point is you shouldn't be married to anybody, you shouldn't be living with anybody, and you shouldn't be dating somebody who has mental illness or has children because she's got children, and if you have sex with her, she'll have more children. No, she cannot have any more. That's what she told she you. Six. That's what she told you. Uh, that's true. I already proved. I mean, sure. I mean, I already. Know Unless you were in the operating room when it happened, all you know is what she told you. Well, not really, Tom. I'm, I'm pretty sure she is. But, you have? Uh, how do you know? My, I want to know how you know that. How do I know that? Yeah. Because, uh, because she told you. And also because she hasn't had a kid for the last five years, so she's not having sex. You know, you might be right, but. <laughs> Well, I don't know, Tom. I would be pretty sure that she would have a kid of mine at all. <laughs> I'm telling you, she'd have a kid of yours if you had sex with her. I don't know. She would probably have already had it with me, but no. Nah, she No, was she hasn't funny. had sex, and she doesn't want to have sex with you. And she told you she doesn't want to have sex with you. She's playing hard to get, I guess. Uh, you're married. Get out of the marriage. and then. But, you know, but when you do, you don't want to be with somebody who's mentally ill. Okay, Tom. Well, let's say I'm not. What can I Are do you together? that desperate? Let me ask you a question. Do you have so little game that the mentally ill are the only ones you can prey upon? You know, that's my problem, I believe. Why, well, you have no game? My question is, how can I get game, Tom? That's what I basically call Well, you. start by manning up. Get a divorce. Get out. Get your own apartment. Live by yourself. And stop dating mentally ill broads with children. Okay, once I do that, what would be my next? I'll tell you what. Call step. me back when you've done that. We'll discuss it. Jesus Christ. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Oh, my God. You know, one of these is worse than the next. Uh, Joe on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? <sighs> okay. Tell us about your situation. Well, uh, I was... Uh, let me get the bar... Wait, let me get the barf bag out for this one. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I met this girl probably about like a year ago, and uh, we started dating, or we started hooking up, and we just started dating, kind of fell into a relationship. And, you fell into it. By the way, your age... 23. Strike one. Go ahead. <laughs> and then, um, basically, like, I was dating her, and then I started actually... Meaning you were porking her. You. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, uh, <clears throat> basically, I started listening to your show, and it got me motivated to, like, break up with her, and I ended up, like, cheating on her, so I just broke up with her because of that. And then, like, I banged, like, a couple girls, like, in between, like, two months, and <laughs> then I got back together with her, because, like, I kind of just, like, missed being in a relationship. What kind of relationship is this? Uh, I don't know. I, what do you mean? I'm asking you, Pat, what is it like? What do you do? What makes it a relationship beyond banging? Oh, you know what? Like, she buys me stuff all the time. She buys she you stuff, things. so you missed having stuff bought for you. <laughs> well, she takes care of me. She always, like, does anything I want. Like, she drives me anywhere I want to go. Like, Don't you have a car, son? Yeah, but gas is expensive right now. I see. <laughs> <laughs> so she's yeah, a she's a sugar in a gas good. tank, Mama. What? <laughs> she treats me good, and she's hot too. Mm -hmm. So, what is your question? My question is just like I don't I don't know. I always hear you like talk about like just bang girls and leave them, and like there's no like substance to that because I've done that a no, lot. No, you I'm should like, use them like your mommy you know, to be a chauffeur, pick you up at soccer practice. That's right. <laughs> I guess so. Huh? Ah, yeah, that's great. What a great relationship, mommy. I need a ride. <laughs> but I mean, like, you know, how do you just like, how do you just bang girls and then like be on your own and like? Where's your Where is your father? My father. I work for my father. Yeah. You ever ask him this question? Uh, no. You know, my dad. Uh, he's you know he's been married forever and like he's kind of like the relationship type of guy. So. Uh huh. So he's a pussy. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. And he's raised a pussy, too. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I've had my share of women, and I did... You oh, know, yeah, what did you date? Six or seven at least. Uh, you know, I've, uh, this is actually, like, my second relationship. I banged probably, like... In the wow! 40s, 40s, Two and, relationships! Yeah. Uh, what's that? Are we overtime here? Should I stop talking now? 
I'm going to stop talking now.